Now, Salesforce have got a, has got a really powerful feature, which is campaign influence. And I just want to show you this before we kick off. And this is this is Ebster's campaign influence setup. And if we look at it, it's also worth mentioning if you if you go to setup and you're an administrator and you go to campaigns, you've got then a campaign influence section that will take you to this area. So we've got automatic association enabled. I'm really interested in the campaigns that someone has been involved with in the last 90 days. Our deal cycle is about eight weeks or, or 10 weeks. So everything that's happened in the last 90 days is relevant when I'm looking at the closed opportunities. You'll see that I'm also able to, to define the campaign member status. So what you don't want is the, this to be empty and, and all of the sent campaign members to be added to all your campaigns. Just because you've emailed someone about a webinar, if they haven't signed up or they haven't attended or you didn't speak to them, then they, they really shouldn't be associated with that campaign. So once we've built campaign influence, we can create a campaigns with influence opportunities report in Salesforce. And that will look something like this. So you'll see that I'm just looking at the webinars from this year here. And you'll see that all the people that have been signed up or attended our webinars in the last, actually not this year, in the last sort of 12 months for these webinars. Now the important thing here is you'll see at the top, Shelley Demo exists twice. And just below Shelley, you've got Michael Maz, and he's there at the top, and he's also there at the bottom. Now, if I was to expand campaign influence out across all EBSTA campaigns right now, you would see the same person appearing on 5, 8, 10, 15 different campaigns. Because the influence of all the different campaigns, marketing does not work in silos. Campaigns do not work in silos. You might get one person who signs up for a webinar and then buys. But that is a rarity. People have multiple touch points with marketing. So I just want to really, really illustrate that the different marketing touch points are key when you're looking at ROI reporting. Now, here we've got a campaign with opportunities report. Now here, this is what this is going to do. This is going to look at an opportunity and it's going to look at the primary campaign that is against the opportunity. And then, and then it's going to show the amount. So this is really where you start getting your ROI. And you can group the campaigns and, and you can do a lot of different things in this report to, to get a full view of, of your performance in the last quarter or the last year, um, or specific teams or areas. Um, we all know that Salesforce reporting is very powerful. This is a very, very basic example. Now my point here, going back to, to what we just discussed with, with campaign influence, is that this will automatically be populated. The, the campaigns will automatically be populated against the opportunity when salespeople attach a contact role to an opportunity as long as they're associated to a campaign. However, if we've got the newsletter example where we, we sent out a newsletter and, and they did something that ended up them being added to a newsletter campaign with, with, with the, the member states that have responded, or say, for instance, we, we spent a huge amount of money being the platinum sponsor for an event, and then someone signed up for the webinar. Well, if I'm spending a lot of money being a platinum sponsor, and then we run a really great webinar program, and lots of people sign up for our webinars after that event, when it comes around to the next year, when I'm saying I want to do this event, I want to be the platinum sponsor again, I'm going to look at my marketing ROI report and we're going to see that we've got no opportunities. However, we're going to see that our webinars are fantastic. So the argument is going to be, well, we don't need to do executive uh, or, or executive uh, sponsorship or platinum sponsorship. We should just do webinars. But that isn't the truth. Now, as much as we hate it and as much as it's going to pain me to say this, after 10 years, this is really, really the truth. And the truth is that to track ROI accurately, marketing has to verify the primary campaign associated with each opportunity. 
Now this might seem like a bit of a drag, and some months, you know, the better the, the, the company does, frankly, the more work it is for marketing. But that is the only way we can truly associate the right primary campaign, the right action, the right thing that got that deal over the line with each opportunity and get proper, accurate ROI reporting. And to do that, we use campaign influence. Now it's worth saying that campaign influence also provides me with an amazing insight to this, this holistic view of all marketing campaign performance. And it's not just limited to, to new business deals coming in. If I can look at all of our customers and all the important people in our customer base, and I can see all the marketing activities that we're doing to engage them, and I can relate that to renewals, then that is also a worthwhile cause. That is also a worthwhile investment. So the ability to use campaign influence across multiple different scenarios is really, really important to our business. And just to finish, it's worth saying that Salesforce triggers can be used to make the primary campaign association that happens when you add a contact role to an opportunity much more accurate. Essentially, if you build your own trigger, you can take anything into account. You can look at the first campaign. You can look at the biggest investment. You can really go to town when you're, when you're coding your own trigger to lessen or to make that, that automatic association of a primary campaign much more, more relevant, more effective, and, and more accurate. Uh, that said, I would still urge you to, to verify that as a marketing department because at the end of the day, it's all very well spending the money, but you need to put in the hours to make sure that you're spending that money well. That brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, you can link with me on LinkedIn or my Twitter handle is there too. And while I'm answering the questions, it's also worth mentioning that we've got a webinar next week with Ben McCarthy, who's a Salesforce MVP, who's going to talk all about Salesforce automation, including a lot of the, the things I've just spoken about, such as triggers and, and automation and, and building those for yourself in Salesforce. So with that, are there any questions?